Hello friends, this is a video about a story and I invite you to stick around and hear the whole story because even though it's about my journey, it applies to your life as well. This story is called The Story of Five Regrets and the subtitle is Why You Should Just Take the First Step and that's where it applies to you. In sharing this story with you, it is my intention and, and heartfelt desire to help you see that we really only need to take one step at a time and allow life to lead us. Because if I'd have known where Five Regrets was going to go, I would never have written it in the first place. I would have been overwhelmed with how I would deal with the success. I would be overwhelmed with details of how this would happen and how that would happen. So instead, I just took the first step. It was 2009 and I had just finished working with dying people. I was also a singer-songwriter at the time and I had no idea that my creative journey was actually going to overlap with what I had considered my, my working life, looking after dying people. I had no idea for all of those years that the work and the love that I was putting into looking after dying people was actually a massive part of my ongoing calling. And I ask you to try and trust in life that wherever you're at right now, try and trust that in the big picture, the lessons you're going through right now, the experiences you're, you're having are actually relevant to your heart's calling, even if they don't feel like it. So I had just set up a songwriting program in a women's jail and an editor for a music magazine uh, asked me if I'd write an article about it. I was a singer songwriter at the same time as I was looking after the dying people and it was at a festival that I was playing at. And so I sat down one night and I wrote this article by pen, just not, not on the computer, just a handwritten article and then I put it onto a computer after about my time working with dying, uh, about how I'd, sorry, about how I'd set up this program for the uh, inmates at a women's jail. And after I'd finished writing this article about how I'd set up this program, I thought, why aren't I writing more? I love writing, and I was a songwriter, but I thought, I, I love writing. I used to always have pen friends, and I, I loved writing when I was younger, but I, I just somehow had let it slip away so I thought I'll start a blog and so when I sat down to the first article was about working in the jail and so when I or how, how I set up the songwriting program and what I was learning about that and so when I sat down to write this second article I had no idea what I was going to write about I even googled um, blog subjects or popular blog subjects and stuff like that and so I made a cup of tea and I went outside and I was sitting on a, a lounge on the veranda and just looking at the birds and, and praying for guidance. And very clearly, my inner guidance just said, write what you know. And I thought, okay, well, I've just finished writing, working with dying people. I'll write about my time with them. And over the course of the eight years, I'd had a lot of similar conversations about the regrets that dying people were sharing with me. And I started recognizing these common themes, having absolutely no idea that I would be sharing them on. There were a couple of patients, quite a few patients who asked me to share their learning onwards. But in my mind at the time, I was so focused on being a singer songwriter that I just thought, okay, well, I'll write their stories into songs. And I did do with one or two of them. But I, I didn't realize that it would form, it would come out in this form. So I sat down and just wrote the top five regrets of the dying, the article. No idea it was going, that a seed was sown at that moment. And it took about six to eight months for it to, to actually take off. And during that time, I'd finished, once I finished working with, with the jail, once my funding had run out, I was burning out and I, I really needed some time out. And so after about six months, while I was going through a healing crisis of, of learning to receive and learning to let go of all of the, the stuff from my past that had held me back and step into my power, the blog started gaining a little bit of momentum here and there. And then a, a few months further on after that, 
probably about almost a year, 10 to 12 months after, it just took off like lightning and all of a sudden I had all of this and I was ready for it then. I wasn't ready for it when I first wrote, wrote the blog. I needed to go through this healing in the meantime. But all of a sudden I had all this interest in my work and it was massive, it, absolutely massive. It was over a million people read the article in the first year and over eight million in the, in the third year. So you don't know, you really don't know, but you have to actually just take that first step and trust that, that it will lead wherever you're meant to go for your own healing. I didn't know that this was going to lead me to being a public figure. I definitely would not have have pursued this path because I had so I was so resistant to being in the public eye but life just let me do it one step at a time and as you can see I've grown into this now so during this huge crazy time of momentum I was living on in a little cottage on a 2,000 acre farm by a creek with uh, just running water all the time and lots of wildlife around it was it was a pretty special little place certainly a great place for healing and I was contacted by an agency in America, an, a lovely agent, uh, uh, about getting the book published. And so I signed to her and uh, we sent the book out to 24 publishers and I had also sent it out to one other. So it was rejected by all of them, by 25 publishers. And so I was able to be released from that contract and I decided that I would write the book as an independent release because so much momentum had happened that it was showing me there was interest in, in the story. And not only that, like most of you, most of us, we have a story within us that, that wants to be told. And so I always thought that I'd probably write a book, but I didn't imagine that it would be a public book. It would just be something that I'd hand on to other family members, perhaps. So with all of this, I grew into the idea that, okay, I was going to publish a book. But after it was rejected by 25 publishers, I just thought, okay, well, I've been a, an independent singer-songwriter. I'll be an independent author. And that book became this book. This is the version, the very first version of it, the top five regrets of the dying, which I put out independently. It's a little bit thicker than, uh, a little bit larger than, than the, um, the published book that came later. I'm not sure if you can see those those so well Ooh, there I go okay so this was the <laughs> this was the original one um, and I released this independent I released this one independently and again momentum and then again a lot of momentum and all of a sudden and my life had changed enormously by then and I was about to become a first-time mum at 45 I was incredibly blessed to conceive naturally and quickly at 44 and I had, it had taken 14 years to get to this point, 14 years of creative courage, um, of courage on my creative journey to get to this point. I had been a photo a la uh, doing landscape photography and writing inspirational quotes. This is before the internet, before all memes were, were you know, everyday, everyday snippets of inspiration. So I was selling photos at markets. Then I was on the songwriting path and then I started blogging and then I got to this point where I'd been rejected by 25 publishers but all of a sudden the book took off. So it took me 14 years to become an overnight success, as you do. And um, so all of a sudden I, I had all of this massive global interest in my book and I was in labour about to have my baby. And there were some really rude journalists insisting on interviews at that time. There were some who I did try to um, supply an interview to, and so I was doing email interviews and voice interviews from my hospital bed while I was in labour. But there were a couple of interviews, um, because I'd been, uh, the article had been gaining momentum, I'd been doing quite a lot of interviews in the year prior. So there were a couple of uh, publications that actually had my phone number and they were ringing up at you know 10 o'clock at night insisting I do do an interview and uh, I did not do those interviews I was learning a big lesson about boundaries but about 11 o'clock that night I shut the computer and I sent out a very strong prayer and I said to life to God enough I cannot do this on my own anymore I need help I'm going to quit on this journey even though it had taken me 14 years to get to this point I'm going to quit on this journey 
if you don't send me some help because I'm about to become a mother. I was 45. I knew I'd never have another chance to have a child. I wanted to be present for my beautiful baby that was clearly arriving any moment. And so we do reach that point where we have to surrender and where the outcome, we're not so attached to the outcome anymore. I had been so fixed that my music was the way my message would be heard and and so rigid in that that I actually blocked all of this other opportunity coming to me for a long time for a long time and it was only through my music that I actually ended up writing that first blog and I wouldn't have done that if, if that music editor, his name is Sess, if he hadn't actually reached out and said can you write an article for our magazine. So we don't know the steps that are going to take and that, that are going to unravel but we have to keep taking the steps and staying focused on what our heart's desire is. The vision doesn't always turn out the way we think it's going to. I thought I was going to be able to be a singer-songwriter, play at folk festivals, hardly be known, hardly have my name recognised, but somehow make a living from that and just write songs. But it didn't turn out that way at all. It's, and, and the way it has turned out is absolutely perfect for what my heart asked for. I wanted a quiet life where I worked from home. I didn't want to be out doing gigs in pubs and that sort of thing. And so within 24 hours of my daughter being born, my dream publishing house, Hay House, contacted me and offered me an international publishing deal. While my baby was there, only within hours of her being born, I received this phone. The phone was ringing. I was busy and crazy in, in, in my room. My mum was there. The dinner lady was there trying to put my meal down, I was still doing interviews with a newborn baby, I'd gone back to doing more interviews, it was ridiculous and thankfully this voice from, a, from God, a, a beautiful gentle voice from Hay House, Leon Naxon from Hay House Australia was on the phone and he offered me an international publishing deal. So I just burst into tears as is expected and I just said I'd, I'd call him back later. So when I left the hospital five days later, I had an international publishing contract and a beautiful little girl. And, uh, and my journey then began. Um, it just, just went crazy from there. So that smaller version, that, that smaller publication is, is the, first, the first version that came out as a published book. I hadn't edited Five Regrets at all. I didn't know I was writing for a huge audience. I, even though the blog had taken off, I think at the time I had about 200 people on my mailing list and a similar amount, probably about 500, following me on social media for my music journey, my musical journey. And some had started, I'd started blogging more regularly through all of this. And so I had a following for my blog. But I had no idea it was going to lead where it would. And Within a few months, Five Regrets became the fastest foreign rights seller in Hay House history. So it's now reached people in 32 languages and it has a movie in the pipeline as well. And I have become a spokesperson for this message. And through that, I've had to grow through so much resistance, let go of so much resistance to being a public figure and to actually honor the message that I've been bestowed. And through breaking through this resistance, I have found joy and parts of myself that I could never have found if I wasn't, if I hadn't taken that first step. And soon after my daughter was born, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And so I continued my healing journey after that. And I wrote a second book immediately following um, Five Regrets, or not immediately following, but soon after. My publisher had said that my audience was waiting and what did I else did I have up my sleeve? But at the time, I had a newborn baby, or she was probably about six months old by then, but the rheumatoid arthritis journey had kicked in in full strength and I was in such chronic pain that I was hardly able to sit and stand on my own. And it, it was a her absolutely horrific time and so when the publisher asked me for another book, it's like, I was just like, I cannot do this. And so I said to him, look, my focus isn't, it's just not possible for my focus to be on a full length book right now. 
And he said, well, what, what could you do? There's no pressure from us really, but you know, for your audience, what would you like to do? And I said, well, I can make a collection of short stories. And so I wrote the book, Your Year for Change, which is my second book. And I put it out, it, it's a collection of 52 short stories about regret-free living. And the idea is to put one a week out. I was going to do 50 stories, but it was around the time that Fifty Shades of Grey was coming out. And so we said, let's stick or stay away from 50. You know, how can we, how else can we work this? And I said, well, let's make it because change takes time. You can't just make change significant, huge permanent change overnight. So I said, let's call it your year for change. And we'll do one, offer the, re the reader the opportunity to just read one story a week. Some readers read it right through in one sitting and other people do do it that way. And I send your year for change out with, with so little love and um, and almost with embarrassment because I wasn't, I knew it, it didn't fill the, the shoes of its shadow, its older sibling, Five Regrets. And even when I put out the first edition of Five Regrets, there was an element of embarrassment there and just uncertainty of, um, of how it would be received, but more, I had no writing qualifications whatsoever. I was drawing on high school English from a couple of decades earlier when I wrote the book and I had no funds at the time so I couldn't get the book edited. So when it took off, Five Regrets, when it took off, it took off in its raw form and it's been translated into 32 languages based on that raw form. So this is a reminder to you that you don't actually have to always follow the rules and you don't always have to know every step. Life knows how to do this. God knows how to do this. We don't have to orchestrate every single step of the way. We just have to have the courage to step out there and try anyway. So Five Regrets went out. It was doing its massive thing globally and despite it never being edited, and other than one high school teacher, a friend of mine who was a high school teacher, he read through it and just made a few corrections here and there. Thank you, Rob, for doing that for me. And, uh, and so then, a couple of years on, I, I've released Your Year for Change. And I was, I was a little bit embarrassed about it because I just didn't feel that, uh, that it would live up to the expectations of other people. Of expectations of the readers who had, whose lives were being transformed by five regrets. But I'm deeply honoured to realise that some of my readers actually prefer your year for change. They, um, you know, they've, I, I know readers who have bought a dozen copies for friends and when I was called to narrate that book, Your Year for Change, uh, a few years after that again, I was reading, I hadn't revisited it at all because I was just too busy being a mum and, and where my career had gone and I read it, um, I was in the studio narrating it for the audio book and I finished it and I, my heart just opened, you know, I'm getting teary now just explaining it, but my heart just opened because I realised it's a beautiful work of art, it's an absolute beautiful work of art in its own right but it just had to uh, do its thing quietly and I do think of it now as my my beloved middle child and uh, and the quiet achiever and so following that I wrote Bloom which is my third book and it's a journey of tale uh, it's a tale of courage surrender and breaking through upper limits so all of this was happening in my life and Bloom explains my story about um, the healing journey that, that rheumatoid arthritis has taken me on and how many blessings I found by surrendering into that journey. And in doing that, I was expanding in my own power, in my own groundedness and love for myself and pride in, in how far I'd come and, and just realizing that, that it was all perfect and and that I, I didn't, ha I just let go of the resistance to public life. I also accepted that five regrets is what people want to hear from me. There was no point pushing bloom and pushing your year for change on people. It, they would be called to it if they're called to it. I'd given it my best shot. But at the end of the day, I, was a, I am a spokesperson 
for the regrets of the dying and for regret-free living. Because in order to honour that message of regrets of the dying, I've had to incorporate that learning into my own life and develop tools that have made it possible for me to ensure I am absolutely regret-free now and that I'll be absolutely regret-free at the end of my life. And I am that. I have reached that journey through the journey of bloom, through, through the journey of surrendering and trusting in life's lessons and everything that, that having a disease has taught me. So again, I just try and remind you that in the big picture, our lessons are given to us from an absolute place of love. And it doesn't feel like it very often. <laughs> when we're in the thick of it and we are in such a hard place, it doesn't feel like it at all, that, that this could be about love and that, um, that the hardship we're going through and the absolute pain and our, you know, we're being cracked open in, in the most raw way, it doesn't feel like love. It feels like absolute punishment and penance and a rip-off and every bad word you can think about it. But it is given to us from a place of love and I want you to understand that through the journey that I've been on, I'm sharing this with you so you can understand that the lessons that you are going through and any lessons that are coming your way in future, if you can give up the resistance to them and step into a place of trust, surrender into a place of trust, and that is a practice that is developed one step at a time, but if you can do that, if you have the courage to just keep letting go and letting go and taking one step at a time, life will, will certainly, definitely reward your courage. And it may not be rewarded in the way you try and dictate, but it will be rewarded in the peace you will come to experience in yourself, in the connection with your own divinity, with joy, to levels that you possibly don't even know yet can exist and if you do sort of imagine they exist you've not yet experienced them to that level with the groundedness and the, the being so centered as who you are it's the most incredible feeling in the world so now it brings me to where I am now and where this journey continues from it I won't say where it ends because the journey doesn't end um, there's still a movie in the process for Five Regrets and there's still a lot of people that will discover this book to come. I've been very blessed by my publisher to be able to release a new edition of Five Regrets. This is the updated edition. There is absolutely no embarrassment about this book coming out. It is tighter writing. After working with an editor for Your Year for Change and for Bloom, I've, um, it's natural that my writing has improved. And so now with this edition, with the top five regrets of the dying, the yellow cover, the very happy yellow cover, which I must say is much, the book is much more about life than death. And I truly feel that this cover portrays that beautifully. So this edition, which is out now, the updated edition, it has a tighter writing style in it. And none of the magic or the stories have been changed, none of the flow of the story, nothing has been changed, except that I've just tightened up the message a little bit. My writing has just tightened up. So in, for an example, in some paragraphs, I may have written something in the first sentence. And then when I've read the paragraph years on, I've realized I've said almost the same thing, for example, in the third sentence. So now those sentences emerge. So it is a, a more flowing read for you. And because I've learned to let go of my resistance to public life and, and know that I'm, I don't have to be resistant to it because God is always there beside me and nurturing me and within me and guiding, guiding me within me. And so with all of the support that life blesses me with and blesses all of us with, there's no need to resist. I'm just allowing myself to be the channel for this message and to be carried along wherever it wants to go with the trust that I also receive joy along the way, which I do, which I definitely, definitely do. So, um, so there's a little bit more shared 
in this as well that wasn't shared uh, in the first edition of Five Regrets. Just a few things about my personal life. I, I just open up a little bit more because we're all in this together. We're all allowed to be real. We're all allowed to be vulnerable. We're all allowed to make mistakes. And so it is with absolute joy I share this, this um, version of the top five regrets of the dying with you. And I highly recommend that you grab yourself a copy, even if you've read the first copy, the first edition, because this is the updated edition. And in my learning, I've realized all of us can do with reminders of what's important sometimes, myself included. And so this is now available. And I ask you, to, it's, uh, it's published by Hay House and there will be updates in other languages to come. But at this stage, this is the English update. So I ask you to have a look at this one. It is, it's written, um, it's released seven years after the first one was from Hay House and seven and a half years from when um, yeah, almost eight years actually, uh, from when I put the first copy, the first edition out, the independent release out. So we don't know where our journey is going to take us, my friends. We certainly don't. And I am so proud of this book. In, in putting this book out there, it's the book I've always wanted to write because the journey to getting to this point of releasing it has brought me into being the person I always wanted to be. So I recommend you grab yourself a copy. Behind me, there are that's that's actually five regrets in some of the other editions. I don't have all of them here yet, um, but those are actually the same tale in uh, yeah the same tale in other languages, which is is phenomenal. So please just take the first step. Your your calling may not be as as grand as this in the public eye it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter some of us are called into the public eye some of us are not and it makes no difference there's no scale on who is more important and who is not your calling is just as important as my calling because for every single one of us who has the courage to honor our heart and take that first step and then allow the next step to reveal itself and take that step and take that step and break through the resistance and keep going for every single one of us who does that whether that whether that is done in a public way or whether it's done in a private way we are all creating ripples that benefit the whole planet and goodness knows the planet needs it so i offer you my story to support your story to hopefully give you the courage to just honor your heart and trust that whatever you are doing, it is going to benefit the world in an absolutely beautiful way. We need the ripples of your courage. We need the ripples of your loving, beautiful heart to overlap all of our other ripples and create a beautiful world together. So thank you for listening to this tale of five regrets and why you should just take the first step and grab yourself a copy buy a copy for friends and share it around so that none of us have regrets now or at the end of our life because none of us deserve to we all deserve our own love we all deserve joy and it is my honor to serve you in this way through this book and through this message and I thank you for the ripples that you are also creating on the planet. God bless you.